You are now listening to a member of the Disney Podcast family. Head over to Disney Podcast family on Instagram to see all the latest posts for this show and links to other great Disney podcasts. Welcome back to Miles from Main Street. We're ready to discuss Run Disney's Wine and Dine Marathon Weekend with a special guest. To all who come to this happy place, welcome. Please stand clear of the doors. For the Lord of the Dungeons, the So welcome. I am Brian, and this week I am joined by Tony Rappel. I hope I said that right. Tony, thanks for joining me. Thanks for having me. It's uh, fun to be on a podcast based about Disney, and we live maybe five miles from one another. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> um, it's been a little bit since we uh, started talking to each other. I believe we met up on a YouTube live stream, right? We were, yep. Yep. Hey, I'm from Green Bay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so we've been trying to get together for a while now to do this. So I'm glad that this works out. Um, you are a GB Raps on uh, Instagram, correct? Yep. And you just did the Run Disney Wine and Dine at, at Walt Disney World? Yeah, the, the half marathon weekend. So the this weekend consisted of a 5K, 10K, and a half marathon. Uh, the 10K and the half, if you're in them both, there was a challenge. Um, so then you get an additional medal at the end of that. Now, they do that usually with all the races, right? Yeah, correct. So this weekend is those three. Um, in January coming up is marathon weekend. So that's a five, 5K, 10K, half marathon, and a full marathon. Um, so if you do all four, it's called the Dopey Challenge because you're dopey to do it. <laughs> and then uh, Princess Weekend is in February. That's a 5K, 10K, half marathon. And Springtime Surprise uh, is the newest to the bunch. Uh, it's the hottest weekend by far. That's usually around spring break time frame. Uh, that's a 5k, 10k and a 10 miler. Cause it's too hot to run a marathon or. <laughs> yeah, it, it's brutal. I did it this year for the first time and it was, it was quite hot, but this past weekend wasn't much better. No. Yeah. I was down there, um, as you were getting there and it was, it was pretty warm. And um, the humidity, the morning humidity was, was it? Might have been the worst I've experienced down there for for a run Disney weekend. It was it was brutal. So how do you handle something like that when you're running? I'm not a runner, so I'm going to ask all the <laughs> you know non runner uh, questions. But how do you handle something like that? Biggest thing is slow down. Um, so in the morning, the races all start at five a.m. before the parks open. Uh, so typically, I get up at two a.m. Get on the first bus around two thirty, and then. Um, get to the parking lot and there's all kinds of stuff going on. There's characters you can meet and stuff, but for the weather, it's just slow down. That's really all you can do. Dress for it. Um, most people run in costumes, not everyone, a lot of people do. So you kind of have to look at your costume as the weather's coming up, the forecast and see like, all right, can I adjust this? Um, my half marathon costume, for example, I had long sleeves at the first medical tent. Those sleeves were cut off. <laughs> that was way too hot. Um, so it's, yeah, you just got to adjust on the fly and, you know, see what you can do to survive, but it's, it's not too bad. Slow down, drink, drink a lot of water and stay hydrated. All right. I would, I kind of expected some of those answers, but like I said, I'm not a runner. So. <laughs> <laughs> Um, we've already gotten into it, but I do have to remind everyone to please like, and subscribe to the show. And, uh, do that on your podcast app and YouTube and be sure to share it out. Remember, we have new episodes every Tuesday. And now on Fridays, you can find the Disney Dash, a short form podcast from my daughter, Mia, where she's talking Disney from A to Z. And it's giving you a kid's perspective. Uh, find that on Fridays. All right. So we kind of started getting into it, but um, I want to know, like, why Disney? Why? What connects you to Disney and makes you want to get down there for all this? So it all started. My first trip to Disney was February 2020, right before the world ended. <laughs> um, we, my wife was bugging me for a while to take our daughter. Uh, my wife had gone twice as a kid, loved it. 
Um, and then we had some neighbors, we had some good friends, all big Disney people kept saying, you just got to do it. You got to do it. You're going to like it. My brother was one of them. And I'm like, all right, if my brother is a big fan of this, I think I might, you know, maybe I'll like it. We'll give it a try. So we went down and the first time you see your, your kid, my daughter was two and a half interacts with a character. I was sold, you know, it was, it was amazing to see her run up and hug Mickey. You know, there was no hesitation with any of the characters. It was, it was absolutely incredible. Um, How old was she? Then, she was two and a half. Okay. So that was the key we were going before she was three and we had to pay. Um, <laughs> and then COVID happened. And then we're kind of sitting at home. You know, we're all, we're all working from home. Our daughter's home from daycare. So we're like all in one room teaching her. By September, we're like, all right, we, we got to get out of here. We got to do something. Um, so we're like, let's go to Disney World again. And so we did probably one of the greatest times I've ever had there because there was no one there. Um, I know people complained about wearing a mask outside because it was so hot out. If I'm in 90 plus degrees, I'm miserable as it is. So the fact that I have a mask on isn't going to change that. Um, so yeah, you could walk on any ride you wanted. It was, it was unbelievable. Um, so then it just kind of drove it home more and then we just kept going and going and going. Um, and then eventually I found, or I saw a picture of me on a plane going to Disney, uh, kind of ties it all together. And I didn't like how I looked. I gained weight during COVID like many people did. Um, I was an athlete back in the day and now I'm like, all right, what am I now? And so I started running. So I did what millions of Americans do. And I bought a treadmill on black Friday. Um, <laughs> and I was like, all right, I'm going to use this. Um, but I never ran distance. I played basketball and stuff growing up. So it was all more sprinting endurance sports. Um, so I just started sprinting intervals on there and you know, that gets old after a while in your garage. And, and so then I tried running distances. So I would, Run a couple miles here, be absolutely exhausted, way slower than anything I like expected of myself. So I was really down. And then I don't remember that how or why I discovered that run Disney was a thing. And I was like, all right, this is cool. Um, so I signed up for the 5k at marathon weekend, 2022. And so now I had a goal. So now I like get me out of the dumps. Now I have a goal to be driven for and trained for. So I was training like crazy for that. To me, that was my marathon. You know, I'm like, holy cow, this is going to be the first 5K I ever run. It was crazy. And my training was going okay. And then I discovered the run, walk, run method. Um, so Jeff Galloway is a former Olympian from the 70s. And he's like the run Disney spokesperson. And he came up with the run, walk, run method. So basically, you run for a duration of time. For example, most of my runs, I'm running 90 seconds walking 30 seconds, running 90 seconds. And I do that repeatedly the entire duration of the run. Um, so what that does is it's saving your body for at the end of races, end of a half marathon, marathon, anything like that. It brings your heart rate down. That was my big thing. My heart rate was always really high, like scarily high. So this really helped train my heart rate down, bring it down. Um, so then I get down to run Disney, run my first race, my 5k, I was dressed as Chewbacca. My daughter had the matching Chewbacca dress. Uh, I remember crossing the finish line, crying. Um, if you ever start running, every every time you break a distance, you're going to cry. It just kind of comes along with the distance because you're so proud of yourself that you did it finally. Um, so I remember just like taking all these pictures of my daughter and then we're in the parks and I'm seeing people with all these other medals throughout the weekend. I'm like, what is this? You know, what's going on? And I learned of the Dopey Challenge. Uh, which is the all four races that weekend. So I said to my wife, you know what, I'm doing that next year. And so now I had another goal and now I had another reason to keep running. Um, so I signed up for wine and dine that year as well. So that was my first time going to Disney by myself. So I went to that race weekend, not knowing a soul. Um, I'm a very outgoing social person, but even I was intimidated by that. So um, I went down there, made some friends. If you want to meet the nicest community of humans in the world run a run disney race it is unbelievable the people there have changed my life i have so many great friends that are built strictly from run disney um, they traveled to see me run the chicago marathon this year from multiple states all around the country the east coast everywhere wow. um and That's you know awesome. and then we got and then we got to run together at disney this past weekend yeah it was, it was amazing um so yeah, so I ran that weekend and then I ran the dopey challenge that one year, you know, almost to the day I ran a 5k, a 10k, a half marathon and a marathon. And like, 
it's pretty nuts to think about the trajectory that I went on and it, it never slowed down since then. So I've, I'll be there for my third straight dopey, uh, in a couple months, you know, like I couldn't be happier. It's, it's, it's so much fun to go down there and just see, you see your friends, like these people you hang out with for three days at a time. And it's like, you guys have been friends for 10, 20 years. It's, it's absolutely incredible what happens. That that's awesome. And, you know, to hear all of this and to think, um, so about a month ago, we ran into each other at Costco yeah. and, um, the, the way I saw you is that I saw your tattoo on your calf first. And I was like, Oh, that's a really nice Mickey tattoo. And I kind of looked up then and saw your face and I was like, dang, I know who this guy is. So I went <laughs> over to say hello and to know, you know, basically four years into this, um, Disney connection, right? Like you've, you've got a tattoo on yourself of Mickey mm -hmm. Mouse and, like you've you're you're all in with this, and that's that's just so cool. Um, yeah. So my tattoo, I, it's a dopey tattoo. It's kind of the whole basis of it. So after my first dopey, um, under Mickey it says forty eight point six, which is how many miles we run during a dopey weekend. Um, but I didn't like associate with the dopey character. Like M Mickey Mouse, Disney World changed my life. You know, it opened my eyes to see the magic of a child in Disney World. But also it changed my life because it opened my eyes to like what I could do athletically. You know, in my 30s, as I get older, it brought me back into wanting to work out, being in a sport and just change my life from a health perspective. And so that's why that's why I got that that tattoo. Cause it, it, I mean, I have no other tattoos. That's like the most impactful thing that's <laughs> happened to me in you know how long. So yeah, no, that's awesome. Uh and I okay go on a tangent because that's what we do here but <laughs> um i was i think i was getting my hair cut and the person cutting my hair had a bunch of tattoos and we were talking tattoos i don't have any um but my thought has always been that there should be meaning behind it if you're going to put it on your body there should be meaning behind it and that's just what i've always thought she blew my mind when she said that they have vending machines at these tattoo parlors and they just someone will pull one out of there and whatever that design is they put it on themselves and it's just so anyway i i appreciate the, the tattoo i think it's pretty awesome um i've actually been my wife and i have been talking about getting matching ones uh something or long lines of disney so nice. um, haven't settled on it quite yet but we'll get there so we know how you got signed up for the race um you know, you mentioned costumes. Let's talk about those costumes. It's, you post them on so Instagram. It's, yeah, it's fun to see you in them. So <laughs> how does this work? Uh, so each weekend has a theme. Um, the one we just did was uh, the 5K was Muppets with the Swedish chef. The 10K was Tiana. And the half, the half I think, was Remy. And then the challenge was Mickey. Or those might be reversed. I don't remember. Um, so a lot of times people address on those themes. Um, I didn't. So, uh, the 5k <laughs> I ran with my daughter, it was her second Disney 5k and my wife and my daughter, Natalie's idea since before we even signed up for these races was she wanted to be a magic band plus that lights up. She wanted me to be the magic band touch point and my wife to be a cast member. And my wife absolutely knocked it out of the park. It is easily my favorite costume I've ever worn now, the to see my daughter light up as everyone was complimenting us and her proudly saying, this was my idea. Like it was, it was so cool. Incredible idea. I saw the yeah. series. I was like, that is incredible. And to know it came from her. Yeah. They, yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. It was cool. So a lot of time my costumes are based on her likes or her ideas. Um, so we'll, sometimes we'll go sit in like her toy bin with all the little action figures of Disney characters and we'll go through and we're like, all right, what should I be this time? Um, so then, then I did a Hercules group costume. So as I met people, this is kind of how it took off last year at Wine and Dine last year. Um, I saw someone post on Instagram, they were going to do a Hamilton group costume. So I messaged the person who I'd never spoken to before. You just un run Disney Instagram, you just follow everyone. And eventually you meet them in person and you say like, hey, is this your username? And then next thing you know, you're best friends. Um, so I, I messaged her and I said, all right, well, if I can be Hamilton, Burr or Washington, I'm in. And she said, well, we don't have a Hamilton yet. And I'm like, all right, I'm in. And I met some of my best friends from doing that group costume. 
And then a lot of those same people, we did the group costume for Hercules. So I was Phil um, for the 10K. And then I was Ego, the um, food critic from Remy or from Ratatouille for the half marathon. So that's where the long sleeves came in. He has, I didn't have a turtleneck like him. Um, you got to <laughs> somewhat runify these things. Um, but I've been Sunny Eclipse. I've been Figment. I've been Yeehaw Bob from Port Orleans Riverside. Um, kind of you name it. I've been all kinds of stuff. And a lot of it comes from my daughter. Um, for the last two half marathons during marathon weekend, the first one, the first time I ran it, I was Woody because that was my favorite Toy Story character growing up. So then last year, I had to take my daughter's favorite Toy Story character to go along with that theme. So I was Bo Peep. Um, so it was, it was a fun one to do. I the differences <laughs> of Toy Story 1 to Toy Story 4. So, um, <laughs> yeah, so it was cool. Um, you know, like, in, it's the most inclusive environment. No one cares. You know, there's guys running out in skirts and everything. It doesn't matter. Like, everyone is there to have fun, have fun with it, and just laugh. You know, so it's it's a great place to be. Yeah, it's... It, it, it that extends even to the parks we were waiting in line for the halloween party on the 27th and a bunch of guys walked in in princess dresses and my daughter's <laughs> like, oh that's so cool we didn't run into them the rest of the night but it would have been fun to see them <laughs> <laughs> i love it like it's yeah just have fun so one of the um, yeah. run disney announcers riley claremont he said this was i think at my first wine and dine weekend when i was there by myself he said, let your freak flags fly. And like, that just resonated with me. Cause I'm like, yeah, we're all here. We all like Disney. We all like running. We're all here to have a good time. So who cares, you know, what you wear, what you dress like. It's, it's a totally different environment to be in. It's safe. It's fun. Yeah. I just, I, I just can't say enough good things about run Disney. Well, that's awesome. Um, you know, I wanted to get into specifics about wine and dine. I know you've kind of talked about the distances and stuff but um before we started recording we were talking about uh riding rides and i know that there's character i see pictures of runners with characters all the time um so you know like how does some of this work so every morning starts out you get you get to the Ep epcot parking lot is where we start from um and they have a stage with the dj going announcers and then they have four characters two on each side of the stage they typically have something to do with the theme or the weekend. Um, so like Remy and Emil were uh, kind of alternating throughout the weekend. Mickey and Minnie were there in their chef costumes. Uh, Tiana from, um, was it 1900 Park Fair? That outfit, like her from the ride. To, oh, like, so it wasn't her, it wasn't the, the traditional the Tiana. Yep, yeah, like the safari looking around. around. Yep, yeah. yeah. And then Baloo was there. That was a random one. Um, <laughs> They had the chickens from the Muppets, like they had an actual puppeteer. And oh, really? then even they had the Swedish chef at the start line in that race too, which was like, there was a puppeteer there for probably an hour and a half performing. It was incredible. It was That's so fun. Cool. Yeah. And then on the course. Bring, like, they just ahead. bring these people out and allow them to entertain, I guess. Are you guys, yep. so you said you're there, you're up at two, you're there and the race is at five or whatever doors open at yeah like security opens at three races start at five uh beer 10 opens at six <laughs> <laughs> uh so there's always a parking lot party after the race uh it's fun okay. hang out there for a few hours um but on the course every i think it's like every half mile or so there's either a character or some kind of entertainment and so there'll be sometimes they'll have djs sometimes they'll have movie screens um bands like local bands and stuff um, but tons and tons of characters. And a lot of times you get rare characters. Um, like Bullseye was one I got during the half marathon that I'd never gotten before. Um, but you think of like any character you've seen in Disney World or Disneyland, you might see them on a run Disney course, which is really cool. Um, I love the movie Onward. Very underrated in my opinion. Um, I lost my mind when I met Barley during the marathon last year. That's cool. Um, <laughs> and Ian Lightfoot during springtime so yeah you never know what you're gonna find it's it's great so what we do is i run with a group of friends now and if a lot of times the lists get leaked before the race so you have an idea where these people are um okay. so then we'll say like all right this character's coming up in a half mile so then one of us will run ahead to get in line and then we'll just take one big group photo so that no one gets mad because you just you might show up with 10 people but we all take one picture and then run away so then the line goes down really fast too um 
Yeah, so it's fun. It's all tied to your bib through PhotoPass. So as long as your bib is showing, you'll get your picture. There's no magic band scanning or anything like that. Um, so then typically if you run with other people, my suggestion is add their bib numbers into your photo pass if you're not linked through my Disney experience, because then you'll get all their pictures because you might have a really cool picture and your bib is half covered so that you don't get it. But your friend okay. next to you's bib is showing, so then you get it. Um, yeah, so it's a lot of stuff like that. It's fun. There's tons of stuff at the finish line. There's always a character on like an elevated platform at the finish line. So during the Muppets 5K, it was uh, Sweetums. And then a lot of times it's the Fab Five usually. Um, and then you come out, you get your medal, you get an excessive amount of stuff to carry. So you get your medal. And then this weekend they did like the cooling towels. And then they hand you a water, then a Powerade. And then you go through and you get your food box and you get a banana. And you're like, all right, now I can't hold anything. <laughs> They're always so full. Um, they should hand you a not having... on the way. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's, it's nice you get all that stuff. But it's like, what do I do with this now? So, um, But they do have bag check trucks. Um, so you get a bag at the expo. So like I always bring like. Typically on a longer race, I'll bring sandals to put on after, um, and then I'll bring all my beer cups. So a big thing about Run Disney is the beer cup. Uh, if you bring it back, a refill is only nine dollars, or if you have to buy a new cup plus the beer, it's like fifteen. So oh. um, the thing leading into every weekend is what cup is it going to be? Because we have various cups from, from throughout <laughs> the years, and then this year at Wine and Dine they changed the cup completely. And it was actually like a wine and dine specific cup. So they made everyone buy cups okay. and then they obviously ran out of cups because they're not used to people buying all the cups. Normally everyone's bringing their own. So, but it was fun. It was cool. So after they have beer, cider, champagne, snacks, they have food trucks in there. So Joffrey's will have a food truck. There was a, a Mexican food, food truck that had great tacos I had after the half marathon. Um, and then the DJ is still going, the characters are still there. Uh, so you can take pictures before and after when you have your medal. So it, it, it's it's an all morning experience. In like saying that in terms of the five k, it's an all morning experience, and you're done by seven eight o'clock, and you can go. So you can still go shower and rope drop a park after. So. Wow, <clears throat> yeah, and I know that like that week that we were down there, the the lines were crazy good, um, and we were in the park uh thursday morning and the lines were really good and i was like where is because i was thinking it was a four-day event not the three-day event that it was because the first race was friday morning right yeah um, and then thursday is the expo so the day before is the expo and that's a whole nother big party for lack of a better term um <laughs> you kind of see all your friends again everyone's got their beer cups um so you get your bib you get your shirts um with every race you get a shirt and then they have a whole expo of vendors and stuff you can get all kinds of stuff in there. And then they have a whole nut. There's three arenas you go into. That's how, like that's how big this is. So you go into one arena to just get your bib. They have characters in there to take pictures with. And then you go into the next arena to get your shirts that you get for running the race, all the other expo vendors. And then the third arena is just the merchandise you can buy, which that you have to get a virtual queue just to get into that. And that's a whole nother mess in itself and <laughs> long lines and whatever. But it's, it's cool. It's worth it. It's all kind of part of the experience now. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, I'm sure you're getting to be a pro at how to handle the the expo at this point. Yeah, I I stopped buying so much stuff because like you get for Dopey, for example, I'll get six shirts for free. Well, for free for the excessive race fee that I paid to be <laughs> into the race. So it's like, do I really need to go buy four shirts in the merchandise? You know. So now I just buy typically a magnet from the weekend. Um, that says the distance on it and maybe something oh and then a shoe ornament um so they all every weekend has a different shoe ornament that you know for your christmas tree so mine's full of them okay. now so those are like the two things i go for now and i can typically get those later or if someone else is in there just text them and they'll buy it for me and then i don't even have to go into that building and deal with it nice uh, it yeah there's always some sort of strategy when it comes to this stuff for disney isn't yeah, it? yeah for sure <laughs> yeah <laughs> and resellers are a problem there just like they are anywhere else at disney oh jeez, so. well, i suppose <laughs> um yeah we i actually ended up picking up the uh the mickey popcorn bucket on my way out of magic kingdom because i was worried that i was going to regret not getting it and want to have to pay me <laughs> I don't want to have to go pay somebody three times the price, you know? Yeah. <laughs> um, so you were mentioning like riding rides 
as part of the race. Um, you we had talked about that before I hit record, but like I that kind of blows my mind too. Like I like for me, you're in a race, so you're trying to continuously go. But um, I know, like you said, this is all in fun. So how does that work? What what happens there? Yeah, so if the, if the park is open and you're near a ride, you can ride it. Um, Disney races have a 16 minute per mile pace minimum, kind of with a little asterisk on it. So the balloon ladies are the last people to start the race and they will walk a 16 minute pace the entire duration. They literally have balloon, like Mickey balloons tied to their waist above them. So you can, you can easily see where they are. Um, so they start at 16 minute pace from the very last people to start. So depending on what corral you're in, there's five, six corrals, depending on the race weekend and stuff. So a lot of times I'm in a higher corral. So it all, by the time the balloon ladies actually start the race, I may be an hour, an hour and a half into the race. So now I have a 16 okay. minute pace plus that buffer ahead of them for them to catch me. And if they pass you, you're not just dead in the water, depending where you are. You know, they're there to motivate you. They're not there to be the, the Grinch to take you off the course. Someone else takes you off the course. Um, so you'll when you're running on the courses, you'll see buses strategically parked, kind of like four buses in a row. And you know that's going to be a hard sweep point. So if you're behind the balloon ladies out there, they'll take you. They'll put you on the bus. They do it very gracefully. Uh, they put you on the bus and they bring you back. You know, there's people there consoling you, whatever. Um, and they bring you back to the um, finish line area. And they will give you your medal still, and they will have you get into the like after party, post race party area, without people noticing that you got off a bus to get to that area. So they do like they do it very respectfully. So no one knows you got swept unless you tell them. Um, so like that's a really Disney way to do it, which I think is really cool. Um, but so so you have to have you have to keep your pace up to be able to ride rides. That's one part of it. Um, so. Animal Kingdom is the notorious one for marathon weekend. Mile 17-ish is Expedition Everest. That is always a go-to for many people. I've ridden it the last two years. Triceratops Spin was one I did last year. I'm going to do it this year because Dino Land closes the day after the marathon. Oh. So I'm, I figured, <laughs> hey, one, one last swan song. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then Epcot. Epcot's hit or miss. I know people have ridden Guardians before. Um, they changed how we finished. We used to run around World Showcase, and it was the most absolute incredible party mile you could have to finish a marathon. We'd all get, we'd have friends out there handing out margaritas to us, beers. So everyone's crossing the finish line with drinks in their hands. Um, people are stopping for food and stuff. It, it's fun, um, but they changed the route, so it's gonna be a little different this year. But the single most magical thing about Run Disney is running down Main Street. When it's dark out with hundreds, I don't know, thousands of people cheering, lined. So they cut Main Street in half, basically. And then what, the whole left side is spectators cheering all the way down um, to the front of the park, all the way up to the hub. And it's just electric. People cheering. The castle's all illuminated. It's it's You can't explain it. Like, you get chills just thinking about it. It's, it's such a cool experience. Um, and you get to run around in Magic Kingdom. Magic Kingdom is not open. Um, one... I think it might have been Princess Weekend two years ago. They did have teacups going in the carousel. I missed that opportunity. Um, sometimes they'll have the rides going, but you can't ride them. But then you get to run backstage at a lot of these parks too. So Magic Kingdom, you run backstage and you go past all the floats. Um, I remember the first time it blew my mind that they're just literally parked outside. No protection, maybe a little <laughs> rough over them, but nothing else. I'm like, all right. Um, but then they'll have characters back there too. A lot of characters backstage and stuff. So a lot of the times when... If you were to walk back there, they'd say, hey, you can't use your phone, no camera or anything. There's no one there to yell at you if you're recording, running by, you know, doing a selfie video, whatever you want. Um, but it, it's pretty cool. And then you come out the backside of Magic Kingdom and run to Animal Kingdom. I and mean, you know how long that takes in a bus. Imagine how long it <laughs> takes running. <laughs> so how do you, like, there's spectator. These They can't be, like, family getting into magic kingdom in the middle of the night or early in the morning is it no it is yeah yeah you're, it's family and friends um so was it two years ago or this yeah two marathons ago 
I ran past my family. My wife likes to uh, remind me of that. Totally ran <laughs> past them on Main Street. Had to no, come back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, nice, nice argument point. Because well, I stopped to see a friend like five people after them that I saw, but I didn't see my family, so I had to go back and you know talk to them. But then they stayed in the park. Um, our friends w- were with them too, and then the buses can't really get to the park then because all the roads are closed, so it really kind of delays the opening. So they got to go through Magic Kingdom like there was no one there. They just kept walking on whatever they wanted. So like that's a nice benefit if you want to get up early and cheer. You do get early entry, so. They'll have a cast member, um, I think it was near Casey's Corner, that would scan their magic band and then let them into the park. Otherwise, you can just get into that area without a ticket or anything. Um, okay. And it's all roped off. So, yeah, it's really cool. So even going to watch can be a lot of fun, even if you're not partaking in the event, huh? Yeah, there's people that come just, I had quite a few friends this past weekend that just came just to cheer, um, get up in the morning and have fun with that part of it. So, yeah, it's it's, it's a cool community. I've been... And just to see like the costumes running by, I know that's what my daughter gets a kick out of seeing all the different costumes, like everything you can think of, things you would never think of. It's it's really cool to see. Yeah, I I've always been in, um, I don't know, in, intrigued by all of the different costumes that I see in in pictures and stuff. I do know a few runners, so it I see their pictures come up on Facebook and stuff when they've done it. So, um, so. I guess, uh, do you have advice if somebody wanted to do one of these, like, how would you get started? I would say just sign up and do it. Um, <laughs> so it's, they're hard to sign up for, uh, this is like getting Taylor Swift tickets. It's say it opens at 10 AM on X day. You're logged on by nine 30 with 30 browser windows, windows open. And then when it lets you in, it's randomly lets you in. So you're hoping you can get in before it sells out. You're texting all your friends. They're, you know, they're signing you up. You're signing them up. Um, so it's it's tough to get in, but if you can get in, it's it's definitely worth it. Um, a lot of my friends always ask me, "How do you run? How do you get yourself to run a 10k or a half marathon?" And my biggest thing is sign up for it. Now you have no excuse. You know, like if you don't do the training, that's fully on you. You are the failure in that situation. So um, if just sign up for it think about it you can do it like if you get in this community and start talking to people before you ever run a race you will find these are the most motivational people out there um so i ran 20 miles on saturday you know listening to your podcast and and a few others and i was just posting random updates just messing around um training for marathons is is really dumb that's my big thing i always say it is i'll never (laughs) change my mind um, so I was doing updates on like when, like you reach a certain point during your training run, you're like, all right, this is stupid. Why am I doing this? Um, so I was posting updates doing that, but just posting those updates on Instagram, every time I'd open it, I'd have a bunch of messages from friends saying like, all right, you got this, keep going. You know, just simple things like that. And I was never saying I was struggling, but it was just a little motivational thing to like keep you plugging away. And that's what this community brings. You know, I could be 10 miles into a, 15 mile run and I, I could tell you 30 people I could call and they're the last thing that they're going to tell me to do is quit. Um, so they're going to talk me through it. We've been here before all these things. So it's, you, you get all these shoulders to lean on that are going to be there for you, not just on race day, but through the training, through the process, through you learning to become a runner. And I think the biggest thing, if someone shows up to a run Disney race, there is no shape, size, anything of a runner. Everyone is a runner as long as you're running at some point, whether you run walking like I do, or you're running the whole thing, or some people can walk a 14 minute pace for the whole race, you know, like they're all still runners. And I think that's, what's really cool about it is you get, you get there and you realize, all right, I can do this. I'm on the equal playing field with all these people here. We are all runners. And that's not something I think you get when you just go online and look around at, you know, a runner's magazine, like, Oh, that, that's not me. Like, it doesn't matter get out there and run. You're a runner. That's great advice because, um, you know, I've, I've toyed with it here and there trying to get going, but never had that goal, I guess. So, um, yeah. So for anyone out there that, you know, call this guy up. (laughs) Yeah. hit, Hit me up. I'm happy to help. I'm happy to talk about running and explain, you know, like the steps to get started. The biggest thing to get started, go to a running store and get fitted for shoes. That is the number one thing to start with. Cause if you don't do that, 
your feet are feet are going to be a mess. You're going to hate running because of it. But if you get fitted for the right shoe, it makes things a whole lot better. You know, like like we have a local running store that I go to, and like when I got fitted, I tried on probably 15 shoes, to, to you know, and kept you know narrowing it down. All right, I like this, 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 this. All right, let's try them all on again. And eventually, I got down to the shoes I run in. So it's it's a nice process. And running shoes are great. Running stores are great. You can run in them for a week. If it's not working out, you can return them. You know, so it's there's there's so much available to you if you just reach out to the right people. I know the hardest thing is breaking down that wall of initially starting, initially going in that store um, when you're not a runner, as I do air quotes. Um, but you'll walk out of that store fitted for shoes, and now you're a runner. That, yeah, I, you know, and I think for myself, like there's, there's a barrier there, like, oh, they're just going to laugh at me. So, um, not interested, <laughs> you know, <laughs> but I mean, to hear you talk like that, that's something that, um, it sounds like it's something that anyone can do. So, um, yeah, that's, that's terrific. So anything else you wanted to add to this that you want people to hear that might be interested or have done it or anything like that? I think one quick thing that we touched on beforehand, before we get on here, um, if you're doing these weekends with a family, think of it, think it through first. Uh, my family's come to many of these. My family's come to many of these. They were there last weekend. Um, it's tough. Like I said, we get, you know, I get up at 2 a.m. Even if you're getting up at 3 a.m., it still impacts your family. Um, so my family, when I first started doing these, they'd come cheer, you know, at the end of every race and whatever. And then it's like, all right, just sleep in doesn't pay um and a lot of times i go by myself because i i know it's going to impact their entire vacation for me waking up early so i just know that you're going to be tired you're not going to want to go to the parks necessarily um so you know if your kid is wanting to go hey let's go walk i went to magic kingdom and epcot for an entire day with my daughter after the 5k and i was like oh cool i get to run tomorrow now and i got thirty-five thousand <laughs> steps in um <laughs> but you know you got to be a dad too while you're there so uh what i did was i split up my last two nights the last two races i shared a room with my friend at pop century so i so him and i were both running so we woke up in the morning it didn't matter my family had their own room they could sleep they could do whatever and then i just caught up with them after the race so just think that think about that part it, it's it's really special to have them there for your first my first 5k my first 10k my first half my first marathon it was incredible to get a hug from my daughter she's my why she's why i do this um so it was incredible to get a hug from her at the end of those races and that never gets old but in the disney environment it's just a little harder <laughs> with the family because if you start going to disney for disney and now you're going to Disney for Disney plus running. It kind of muddies the waters and makes it a little trickier. I can understand that. Yeah, and you're right. We had talked about wanting to talk about that. Um, and you reminded me also that speaking of, you know, spending all day in a park after a run, like, what do you typically do that? Are you um, wanting to be in the park after running? Or is this basically you're there for a race and – the time that you're not racing is just rest. I don't take it that seriously. I, when I first started, I did now I'm there just for fun. I run much slower at Disney than I do at home. Um, so a lot of times it's, Hey, we're at baseline. Hey, we're at Rose and crown. And next thing you know, a few hours later, we've just been drinking cocktails and having fun. <laughs> um, many race weekends. I maybe go on like three rides the whole weekend. Um, I think I, one weekend last year, I went on one ride the entire weekend, but I was in parks. You know, like hanging out with people and doing what everything so it just becomes be, kind of becomes like the disney adult vacation more so where we're just if there's a festival going around eating festival food having drinks meeting up um, we do a lot of resort hopping stuff like that you know hey i'm staying at poly so we hop over there hang out and stuff so it's, it's kind of a mixed bag but i don't necessarily stay off my feet um during the marathon during dopey after the half marathon that that day i'll take fairly serious serious because running a marathon sucks um no matter <laughs> what you're doing so you kind of you know leading up to that you ran a 5k a 10k and a half marathon so now it's kind of like all right i just got to get through tomorrow and then after the marathon i'll go to the parks i'll walk around do whatever it's actually the best thing you can do for your legs is to keep them moving um because when you wake up the next day they're not going to work so great you know go downstairs backwards and everything like that um 
but yeah, just keep moving those days. So, but when you go to the parks, like you're meeting people in the mornings and then you run into them in the parks and it's like, Hey, we talked this morning. That's another way to build those bonds with other friends, other runners. Um, so, you know, you start planning, you know, your next race weekend, you're planning dinners together, lunches together and stuff like that. So you're next thing, you know, you're kind of hanging out with like a core group of people and you're talking outside of race season doing group costumes, things like that, going to run races in their town or they're coming to your town to run a race. Um, so then you can see each other more. That's pretty cool. Um, yeah, it sounds like you've got some really great friends that you've made out of just doing this event. So that's pretty cool. Um, the Disney, Disney community can be a lot of fun and there's a lot of great people out there. So for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, all right. Anything else? <laughs> I, th- I think that's it i mean just get out there and run get out there have fun if you have any you know questions about run disney you can hit me up go on youtube um ox and spoon is a f- very fun group of run disney runners i mean if you want to see how serious or not serious people are there fo- go watch some of their videos their their music videos they make music video parodies re- regarding run disney um their stuff is hilarious and that i think they kind of give like the vibe of what run Disney can be. If you want to see it in a video format. All right. The ox and spoon. Yep. All right. I will get those. Uh, I'll get that linked in the show notes so that people can find that. Melissa Pilgrim is our choice for your next Disney vacation. You can reach her at a magical pilgrimage at gmail.com. We thank her for her support. Thanks, everybody, for watching. And uh, remember, new episodes every Tuesday. You can find us on Facebook, Instagram, and on YouTube. And uh, let us know what you think of Run Disney. Um, we want to you know, hear what your experiences were with that. Uh, so thanks, Tony, for coming on the show. Where can we find you? Instagram is GB underscore wraps. GB for Green Bay, like where we live. Uh, so people always ask me, what does that mean? Uh, that's the basis <laughs> of it. <laughs> <laughs> all right so find them out on instagram um so as we like to say some live close but others don't so let's talk about it we'll see you next time on miles from main street <laughs>